Okay, this sermon is entitled, Salvific, Right Division. I'd like to open up with prayer. And then with a few verses, all right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 29 reads, Give unto the Lord, O ye mighty, give unto the Lord glory and strength, give unto the Lord the glory due unto his name, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thundereth, the Lord is upon many waters. Now, the Bible makes it very clear that we need to understand right division. And if you don't understand right division, you just lump everything together, and what befalls from this is a bunch of confusion. So I'd like to basically delineate between salvific issues versus discipleship, spiritual growth, rewards, etc. And it's very important that we rightly divide what the Bible says on this subject, otherwise we teach a false gospel, and we make a mess out of salvation, and we preach a salvation that does not save. So turn over to John chapter 4. John chapter 4, the first thing we need to rightly divide is salvation versus discipleship. They're not the same thing. Now when it comes to the unsaved false prophets of this world, they do not rightly divide, and they make everything a salvation issue. The reason why they do this is because they're not saved. The saved understand that there's a difference between salvation and discipleship. Salvation takes place at one point in time, and it's by grace through faith. Discipleship is costly, and it's a process. So in John chapter 4, we see in verse 1, it, it reads, When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not, but his disciples. So we see right here that a disciple is somebody that's made. A disciple is trained. They're disciplined. Hence the word disciple. And this is not the same as salvation. Because not everybody who is saved is a disciple, and not all disciples are even saved. These people trusting in their works, they may consider themselves disciples, yet they're not even born again. So that brings me to, to the second issue that needs to be rightly divided, and that is salvation versus spiritual growth. A person does not grow to become saved. You have to be saved in order to grow. The Bible tells us to grow by getting into the Word of God. We should desire the sincere milk of the Word. And spiritual growth is another issue. When it comes to like a person sinning, these unsaved devils, they'll say if you're living in sin, you're not saved. When in reality, if you're living in sin, you're just not spiritually growing. They fail to understand the difference between the two. The next issue that needs to be rightly divided is salvation versus rewards. Salvation is a gift. Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. After we get saved, we have the opportunity to earn rewards. We see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Let's go ahead and turn there. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, let's start off with verse... 11, it says, For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. Stop right there. We have an opportunity to, to earn two types of rewards, and some rewards are going to withstand the fire, while others will not. And that takes me to my next point. We need to rightly divide between the word must and the word should. When it comes to salvation, the question is asked, what must I do to be saved? And the answer is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. But then if you go to Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, it tells the believer in Christ that we are his workmanship and that we should walk in good works. We don't have to, but we should. My next point is, there's a difference between coming unto Christ and coming after Christ. We come unto Christ for salvation. All that the Father giveth to me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. We come after Christ, and we carry our cross. That's discipleship. That's the Christian walk. That's fellowship. They're not the same thing. And then, of course, there's works for salvation versus works after salvation. When it comes to salvation, there are no works that can save us. And, in fact, trusting in works is why people are not saved. But yet, to the saved... 
they have an opportunity to do works, and it's just to help others. Turn over to Titus chapter 3. Let's take a look at verses 7 and 8, and it reads, It says that being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. Now, the unsaved is doing good works to try to get to heaven. They're trying to merit or curry favor with God, thinking that they're going to get into heaven somehow. It's not going to happen. Once you trust Christ alone for salvation, you're saved forever. Now you have an opportunity, based on volition, to do good works for the sake of rewards and blessings and for the profit of others. But it's not part of salvation. So we need to understand that salvific right division is very important because without it, everything just gets lumped and conflated together, and then you have nothing but confusion instead of a separation between salvation and discipleship, salvation and fellowship, salvation and rewards, must versus should, coming unto versus coming after, and works to attain salvation versus works because we are saved and we just want to do them out of appreciation. So that's all I have. Let me go ahead and close in prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.